Our next speaker is um, uh, Simon Davoudi, who is Pre Professor of Environment Policy and Planning and Director of the Global Urban Research Unit at the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape of the University of Newcastle upon Tyne. I forgot to give the, f the full title. Uh, so, Simon, um, over to you for your introduction. Thank you very much, John, and thanks for um, asking me to come and share my ideas with colleagues and friends here. I'm going to talk about one of the key concerns raised by this seminar, which is the lack of visibility and leverage of territorial agenda in the EU cohesion policy, despite the various commitments made in the territorial agenda 2020. And I'm going to suggest that this gap between what's been said and what's been done is largely due to the hollowing out of the original territorial narrative and the failure of constructing a new one. We heard this morning and subsequently that narratives matter. I want to say a few words, I have very little time, why and how they matter. Narratives matter because they are the means by which people, including policymakers, navigate and make sense of the world. Social psychologists have shown that narratives perform a fundamental cognitive function. They help our emotional brain to make sense of the information that is collected by our rational brain. When we encounter a complex issue, let's say Brexit, we try to make sense of it, not by searching for more and more facts and figures about its economic impact, but by seeking comprehensible narratives that match our attitudes and values. So narrative conformity becomes more important to us than scientific rationality. Of course, scientific knowledge is vital for alerting our rational brain that something's wrong or there is an issue there. But on their own, they do not galvanize our emotional brain into action to do something about it, about the problem, to put it right. So a string of well-attested facts and figures or a set of beautifully crafted maps that show a growing territorial disparities and fragmentations in Europe are good, but they are not enough for mobilizing policy change. For that, we also need a powerful narrative. The importance of narrative is already been recognized by the Intergovernmental Task Force for TA 2020+ which highlights the need for, and I quote, developing narratives for the political embedding of the agenda. The term embedding is very important here because to be embedded in policy and practice, narratives need a firm and clear value base. Values are the bedrocks of effective narratives. Without them, we cannot judge what is good. We do not know whether it's better to invest in places where they will generate the greatest returns, as we heard this morning, or in places where they will generate the greatest territorial balance. The choice is a value choice. Without clearly articulated values, narratives become hollowed out and toothless. They lose their ability to become embedded in political discourse and influence policies and practices. And that is what has happened to the original territorial narrative. It's lost its underpinning values. Let me remind you what it was. The original narrative was about balancing development. It was about reducing regional disparities. It was included in the 1957 Treaty of Rome. It informed the EU regional policy. 
It was reiterated in the ESDP. And also, finally, it was consolidated in the Lisbon Treaty through the concept of territorial cohesion. So throughout that journey, the narrative remained meaningful because it was based on a set of value systems which were rooted in social democratic ideals of fairness, solidarity, cohesion, and cooperation. Its most simple yet powerful articulation appeared in the third cohesion report, which said people should not be disadvantaged by wherever they happen to live or work in the union. But by the time TA 2020 came out, the political landscape of Europe had already begun to shift towards a different set of values, rooted in neoliberal ideals of competition, competitiveness, atomization of responsibility, and regions for themselves. This created a mismatch between what was being said and what was being done. The social democratic value base of the original territorial narrative was no longer in harmony with the values that underpin the broader politics of the EU. In other words, the narrative was hollowed out of its underlying values and became a paper tiger. If the intergovernmental task force is serious about embedding a territorial narrative in the EU policies, they need to be clear and make it explicit what their value choices are. And they have to make the choice between constructing a new narrative that conforms to the mainstream neoliberal agenda that some places are better than others, or renewing the social democratic values of the original narrative that all places matter. Irrespective of the choice, I think there are a couple of points that are important for effective narratives. Narratives are most effective when they are simple, engaging, and inspirational. When they, are, when they capture people's imagination and mobilize their emotional brains into action. And they can only do that when they are based on clearly articulated values that can guide decisions and actions. And only then they can dislodge other competing narratives. And so far, and this applies to ESPON to some extent as well, we've had a lot of useful data about growing territorial inequalities. What we desperately need now is a compelling story about what to do about it. A positive story that appeals to as many people as possible and motivates them to demand policy change. Well, thank you very much. Um, a clear and um, challenging point of view there. Um, I was particularly struck by the no more of the social democratic base uh, that words you repeated multiple times there. Something perhaps uh, we want to talk about uh, in the discussion.